uh, reload the PowerPoint. I'm sorry, it's something I, I just fixed it. I am trying the other way to connect to the con connect to the network. So we need to quickly move down to the slides. We just get paused here. Oh, it's kind of boring to uh to to learn this this proposal of course uh yes i i understand it's just uh, difficult to understand and it's uh it sounds boring you have to analyze uh analyze possible execution order of uh, two or more processes and I uh, do hope you can try to uh, list some possible execution orders of, of these two processes after the class to figure out how the uh, Peterson solution work for this issue. Uh, as I said, if you, if you uh, want to figure out how it works, you need to, uh, I suggest you to just list all the relevant, uh, list all the values uh, of relevant uh, uh, variables. For example, uh, I just tap it here, but I'm not sure you, I, I just tap it once in the discussion area, but I'm not sure if you just, if you can, if, if you saw it uh, successfully. So first, uh, if P uh, zero called if P zero called enter region, then you can get the uh, value of the relevant uh, variables as 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 this. So when P zero when P zero executed uh, executes the first three lines, uh, it means uh, now it's uh, P1's turn to get into the critical region, but P0 is interested in entering the critical region. P0, because in interested zero is set as true. It means P0 wants to get into the critical region, but if it can, it's decided by, uh, it, it's decided by the uh, interested one, which will be set, uh, set in P1. So in this, execution order we list on the slides uh, after p0 executes the first uh, three lines you can see uh, if the uh, cpu switch to p from p0 to p1 and p1 will execute the uh, similar three lines and gets uh, other because uh, p1 when p1 called enter region the parameter is one the process is one, but not zero, right? So uh, in P1, other is zero and turn is zero. And int, int, zero, int one is, is true. Cause, cause P, uh, P1. So after, uh, let me just draw a line. At this point, you can check the uh, you can check uh, the, the characters I just tapped in the discussion area. You can check their uh, values. The, you, you can check the values of the variables. And after that, uh, if we move on, if if we uh, uh, suppose that the P1 stay uh, in CPU to uh, to move on to the next line, you will see uh, P1 will check in P1, P1, the last line for P1, it will check if turn is is uh, is zero, right? Because it's other, not process. If turn is zero, the condition for P1 is is this. So if turn is zero and interest zero is true. then P1 has to wait, has to repeatedly uh, execute line four, right? Uh, if you follow me to here, you can see 
uh, P1 has to wait. So as long as P1 in CPU, it has to uh, execute line four. And also, so uh, it cannot move on to the next uh, line. Uh, so next, uh, we will suppose that P0 just gets CPU back because P1 can't move on to the next instruction. And, and finally, P0 will get CPU back, right? So P0 will uh, uh, just keep continue, uh, just, just continue executing its fourth line, uh, the same line, it will check in P0, it will check uh, the, the condition is different from the condition in P1. In P0, it will check if turn is, is one and if turn is If if turn is one and if a P one is interested in get into the uh, critical region, so this is P one a uh, P zero's condition. But you can see this condition is not uh is not satisfied, right? Because now a uh, turn is zero. So in P zero, uh. You can see it's while false. So P0 will just uh, successfully execute it executes line four and move on to the next one because the condition uh, in this loop is false. Because turn at this moment, turn is zero. Turn is not one. If turn is one and interested one is true, then P0 has to wait. But at this moment, P0 will find turn is zero, even though interest one is true, but turn is zero. So P0 will just uh, uh, successfully execute, execute line four and move on to the next execution. That means P0 will get out of this uh, function uh will 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 return will we'll return from this function and move on to the next instruction which will be the instruction in p0's critical region so you can see here we just uh marked it in the yellow yellow part in the yellow part and then uh you can keep checking the next possible the uh, keep checking the subsequent possible orders of these two processes after the class, just in the same way I just show you, I, I just listed some uh, values of the variables. You can follow the same way uh, to figure out how this solution uh, really works. Uh, also, we just, um, uh, there are some uh, hardware uh, solutions. We can, uh, you can see some uh, some 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 chip some some CPU they just uh, provide this spatial instruction. This instruction just combined uh, two operations, the reading uh, and writing operations together. And as long as, as it's because it's an instruction and an instruction, the ex execution of one single instruction is not uh, cannot be interrupted. It's not invisible. So in this instruction, the read and write the two operations will be uh, executed uh, uh, without any interruption. So uh, you can see with this hardware, with this instruction, we can test the uh, value of lock and also we can set the value of lock. We can read and write uh, inside this single instructions so with this instructions or the other uh called exchange uh, instructions uh you can see it's very simple to uh to to uh, uh, uh make sure the mutual exclusion uh finally happen have happened uh because uh first you just use tsl to check to check the locks uh, the, the value of the lock and put that value into register. You, uh, if this value is zero, it means 
it's not locked. Nobody is in the uh, critical region. You can just uh, uh, get into your critical region. But if it's not zero, it means when you uh, you use this instruction to get the value of lock, right? Uh, if this value is not zero, it means it's locked. It's locked by another process. Before you uh, execute this TSL instruction, there is another process which is already uh, executed, uh, which already executed TSL before you, and the the lock is set as zero or it is set as a non-zero value. So you have to uh, you have to uh, repeatedly check, repeatedly uh, execute this TSL until the value you get from this lock variable is zero. Then you can you can return and move on to the next instruction. Okay, so this is the this is the action you need to take before you get into the uh, critical region. And after you uh, uh, leave the critical region, you need to uh, just set, the, you, you just need to open the lock. You, you just need to set it as unlocked by set the zero to lock. So this is the basic idea of this, uh, use a single instruction to, to, uh, uh, to make sure that uh, the, the, the mutual exclusion uh is it is success it is it, it, okay so uh the time is up so i i have no more time to explain it to you um so today we just uh slow slow down but we just waste a lot of time maybe next time ne next class i uh, i should speed up to move on to the most important part about semaphore. Okay, that's all for today. I uh, So see you Wednesday, okay? And I hope you can uh, try to uh, follow the execution order on this, uh, on, on the slide about the Peterson solution. If you can figure out how it works, it will just help you a lot to understand the following content. So that's all for today. Thank you.